Ijihad Arabic, Ijthad Ijihad, Idi, Tihadi, lit. Physical or mental effort, expended in a particular activity is an Islamic legal term referring to independent reasoning or the thorough exertion of a jurist's mental faculty in finding a solution to a legal question. It is contrasted with taqlid imitation, conformity to legal precedent. According to classical Sunni theory, ijihad requires expertise in the Arabic language, theology, revealed texts, and principles of jurisprudence usul al and is not employed where authentic and authoritative texts Quran and Hadith are considered unambiguous with regard to the question, or where there is an existing scholarly consensus Ijihad is considered to be a religious duty for those qualified to perform it. An Islamic scholar who is qualified to perform ijihad is called a muaytahid. By the beginning of the 10th century, development of Sunni jurisprudence prompted leading Sunni jurists to state that the main legal questions had been addressed and the scope of ijihad was gradually restricted. In the modern era, this gave rise to a perception among Western scholars and lay Muslim public that the so-called gate of ijihad was closed at the start of the classical era. While recent scholarship has disproved this notion, the extent and mechanisms of legal change in the post-formative period remain a subject of debate. Starting from the 18th century, some Muslim reformers began calling for abandonment of taqlid and emphasis on ijihad, which they saw as a return to Islamic origins. Public debates in the Muslim world surrounding ijihad continue to the present day. The advocacy of ijihad has been particularly associated with Islamic modernists and purist Salafi thinkers. Among contemporary Muslims in the West there have emerged new visions of ijihad which emphasize substantive moral values over traditional juridical methodology. Shia jurists did not use the term ijihad until the 12th century, but they employed a rational mode of legal reasoning from the early period, and its scope was not narrowed as in the Sunni tradition, with the exception of Zaydi jurisprudence. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Etymology and Definition. The word derives from the three-letter Arabic verbal root of jhd jhd jihada, struggle, the t is inserted because the word is a derived stem eight verb. In its literal meaning, the word refers to effort, physical or mental, expended in a particular activity. In its technical sense, ijihad can be defined as a process of legal reasoning and hermeneutics through which the jurist Muaytahid derives or rationalizes law on the basis of the Quran and the Sunnah. The juristic meaning of ijihad has several definitions according to scholars of Islamic legal theory. Some define it as the jurist's action and activity to reach a solution. Al-Ghazali d. 505-1111 defines it as the total expenditure of effort made by a jurist for the purpose of obtaining the religious rulings. Similarly the ijihad is defined as the effort made by the muaytahid in seeking knowledge of the akam rulings of the sharia Islamic canonical law through interpretation. From this point of view that ijihad essentially consists of an inference istinbat that extends to a probability zan. Thus it excludes the extraction of a ruling from a clear text as well as rulings made without recourse to independent legal reasoning. A knowledgeable person who gives a ruling on the sharia, but is not able to exercise their judgment in the inference of the rulings from the sources, is not called a muaytahid but rather a muqalid. Topic. Scriptural basis Islamic scholar Ashgar Ali Engineer cites a hadith related by a Sahabi companion of the Islamic prophet Muhammad by the name of Moa ibn Jabal also Ma'a bin Jabal, as the basis for ijihad. According to the hadith from Sunan Abu Dawud, Book 24, Moa was appointed by Muhammad to go to Yemen. Before leaving he was asked how he would judge when the occasion of deciding a case arose. Ma'a said, according to the Quran, the Prophet thereupon asked what he would do if he did not find the solution to the problem in the Quran, to which Ma'a said he would govern according to the Sunnah. But when the Prophet asked if he could not find it in the Sunnah also, Ma'a said, Anna idahidu. I will exert myself to find the solution. The Prophet thereupon patted his back and told him he was right. <laughs> History Formative period During the early period, ijihad referred to the exercise of one's discretionary opinion on the basis of the knowledge of the precedent 
Jurists used ra'i to help reach legal rulings, in cases where the Quran and Sunnah did not provide clear direction for certain decisions. It was the duty of the educated jurists to come to a ruling that would be in the best interest of the Muslim community and promote the public good. As religious law continued to develop over time, ra'i became insufficient in making sure that fair legal rulings were being derived in keeping with both the Quran and Sunnah. However, during this time, the meaning and process of ijihad became more clearly constructed. Ijihad was limited to a systematic method of interpreting the law on the basis of authoritative texts, the Quran and Sunnah, and the rulings could be extended to a new problem as long as the precedent and the new situation shared the same clause. As the practice of ijihad transformed over time, it became religious duty of a muaytahid to conduct legal rulings for the Muslim society. Muaytahid is defined as a Muslim scholar that has met certain requirements including a strong knowledge of the Quran, Sunnah, and Arabic, as well as a deep understanding of legal theory and the precedent, all of which allows them to be considered fully qualified to practice ijihad. Topic. Classical era. Around the beginning of the 10th century, most Sunni jurists argued that all major matters of religious law had been settled, allowing for taqlid the established legal precedents and traditions, to take priority over ijihad. This move away from the practice of ijihad was made by the Hanafi and Maliki law schools, and the majority of Shafas, but not by Hanbalis or a number of prominent Shafi jurists who believed that true consensus. Ijm Ajma, apart from that of Muhammad's companions, did not exist, and that the constant continuous existence of Muaytahids was a theological requirement. Quote, After the 11th century, Sunni legal theory developed systems for ranking jurists according to their qualifications for ijihad. One such ranking placed the founders of madhabs, who were credited with being Absolute moitahids moitahid mitlak capable of methodological innovation, at the top, and jurists capable only of taqlid at the bottom, with moitahids and those who combined ijihad and taqlid given the middle ranks. In the 11th century, jurists required a mufti juris consult to be a moitahid. By the middle of the 13th century, however, most scholars considered a mukhalid practitioner of taqlid to be qualified for the role. During that era some jurists began to ponder whether practitioners of ijihad continued to exist and the phrase, "...closing of the gate of ijihad", aglak bab al-ijthad iglak bab al-ijihad appeared after the 16th century, the settling of Sunni law and increasing prominence of taqlid has at one point led most Western scholars to believe that the "...gate of ijihad", was in fact effectively closed around 900 CE. In a 1964 monograph, which exercised considerable influence on later scholars, Joseph Schacht wrote that, "...a consensus gradually established itself to the effect that from that time onwards no one could be deemed to have the necessary qualifications for independent reasoning in religious law, and that all future activity would have to be confined to the explanation, application, and, at the most, interpretation of the doctrine as it had been laid down once and for all." While more recent research has disproved the notion that the practice of ijihad was abandoned in the 10th century, or even later, the extent of legal change during this period and its mechanisms remain a subject of scholarly debate. Shi'i Muslims recognized human reasoning and intellect as a legal source that supplements the Quran and other revealed texts. Thus continuing to acknowledge the importance of ijihad. Topic: Modern Era During the turn of the 16th to 17th century, Sunni Muslim reformers began to criticize taqlid, and promoted greater use of ijihad in legal matters. They claimed that instead of looking solely to previous generations for practices developed by religious scholars, there should be an established doctrine and rule of behavior through the interpretation of original foundational texts of Islam—the Quran and Sunnah. Islamic modernism. Starting in the middle of the 19th century, Islamic modernists such as Sir Sayyid Ahmed Khan, Jamal al-Din al-Afghani, and Muhammad Abdu emerged seeking to revitalize Islam by re-establish and reform Islamic law and its interpretations to accommodate Islam with modern society. They emphasized the use of ijihad, but in contrast to its original use, they sought to apply contemporary intellectual methods 
such as academic or scientific thought, to the task of reforming Islam. Al Afghani proposed the new use of ijihad that he believed would enable Muslims to think critically and apply their own individual interpretations of the innovations of modernity in the context of Islam. One modernist argument for applying ijihad to Sharia law is that while the principles and values underlying Sharia, i.e., usul al fiqh, are unalterable, human interpretation of Sharia is not. Another, made by Ashgar Ali Engineer of India, is that the adat customs and traditions of Arabs were used in the development of the Sharia, and form an important part of it. They are very much not divine or immutable, and have no more legal justification to be part of the Sharia than the adat of Muslims living beyond the home of the original Muslim in the Arab Hejaz. The Ummah was no longer a homogenous group but comprised of various cultural communities with their own age-old customs and traditions. When Imam al-Shafi'i moved from Hejaz to Egypt, which was a confluence of Arab and Coptic cultures, he realized this and changed his position on several issues. In Indonesia, following considerable debate among the ulema, Indonesian adat, "...become part of Sharia as applicable in that country." This use of ijihad to apply adat applies to mu'amalat socio-economic matters such as marriage, divorce, inheritance, rather than ibadah fiqh ritual salat, psalm, zakat, etc. Ashgar Ali Engineer argues that while the Arab adat the Quran was revealed in was highly patriarchal and still informs what is understood as sharia, the transcendental Quranic vision is for absolutely equal rights between genders and should guide ijihad of sharia. <laughs> Islamism and Salafism Contemporary Salafis are major proponents of ijihad. They criticize Taqlid and believe ijihad makes modern Islam more authentic and will guide Muslims back to the golden age of early Islam. Salafis assert that reliance on Taqlid has led to Islam's decline. The Muslim Brotherhood traces its founding philosophies to al Afghani's ijihad. The Muslim Brotherhood holds that the practice of ijihad will strengthen the faith of believers by compelling them to better familiarize themselves with the Quran and come to their own conclusions about its teachings. But as a political group the Muslim Brotherhood faces a major paradox between ijihad as a religious matter and as a political one. Ijihad weakens political unity and promotes pluralism, which is also why many oppressive regimes reject ijihad's legitimacy. The Iranian Ayatollah Ruhollah Khomeini envisioned a prominent role for ijihad in his political theory of guardianship of the jurist. Vilayat Ifaqi, Osama bin Laden supported ijihad. He criticized the Saudi regime for disallowing the free believer, and imposing harsh restrictions on successful practice of Islam. Thus, bin Laden believed his striving for the implementation of ijihad was his duty. Taklif. Topic. Qualifications of a moitahid A moitahid Arabic, diligent, is an individual who is qualified to exercise ijihad in the evaluation of Islamic law. The female equivalent is a moitahida. In general moitahids must have an extensive knowledge of Arabic, the Quran, the Sunnah, and legal theory Sunni Islam and Shi'i Islam, due to their divergent beliefs regarding the persistence of divine authority, have different views on ijihad and the qualifications required to achieve moitahid. In order to clarify how ijihad differs in Sunni and Shi'i Islam it is necessary to explore the historical development of this position in both branches. Topic. Sunni In the years immediately following the Muhammad's death, Sunni Muslims practiced ijihad because they saw it as an acceptable form of the continuation of sacred instruction. Sunni Muslims, therefore began to practice ijihad primarily through the use of personal opinion, or ra'i. As Muslims turned to the Quran and Sunnah to solve their legal issues, they began to recognize that these divine proponents did not deal adequately with certain topics of law. Therefore, Sunni Muslims began to find other ways and sources for ijihad such as ra'i, which allowed for personal judgment of Islamic law. Sunni Muslims justified this practice of ra'i with a particular hadith, which cites Muhammad's approval of forming an individual sound legal opinion if the Quran and Sunnah contain no explicit text regarding that particular issue. Therefore, during the first two and a half centuries of Islam there were no restrictions placed on scholars interested in practicing ijihad. 
Beginning in the 9th century, jurists began to make more restrictions on who could practice ijihad and the kinds of qualifications necessary. Therefore, the practice of ijihad became limited to a qualified scholar and jurist otherwise known as a moitahid. Abul Husayn al-Basri provides the earliest and most expansive outline for the qualifications of a moitahid. They include enough knowledge of Arabic so that the scholar can read and understand both the Quran and the Sunnah. Extensive comprehensive knowledge of the Quran and the Sunnah. More specifically, the scholar must have a full understanding of the Quran's legal contents. In regards to the Sunnah the scholar must understand the specific texts that refer to law and also the incidents of abrogation in the Sunnah. Must be able to confirm the consensus of the companions, the successors, and the leading imams and moitahideen of the past, in order to prevent making decisions that disregard these honored decisions made in the past. Should be able to fully understand the objectives of the Sharia and be dedicated to the protection of the five principles of Islam, which are life, religion, intellect, lineage, and property. Be able to distinguish strength and weakness in reasoning, or in other words exercise logic. Must be sincere and a good person. From the declaration of these requirements of Muaytahid onwards, legal scholars adopted these characteristics as being standard for anyone looking to practice ijihad. In order for the reasoning of these moitahids to be accepted as law multiple moitahids had to reach IJMA. This allowed for moitahids to openly discuss their particular views and reach a conclusion together. The interaction required by IJMA allowed for moitahids to circulate ideas and eventually merge to create particular Islamic schools of law madhabs. This consolidation of moitahids into particular madhabs prompted these groups to create their own distinct authoritative rules. These laws reduced issues of legal uncertainty that had been present when multiple moitahids were working together with one another. However, with this introduction of common laws for each madhab, legal scholars began to dismiss the practice of independent ijihad and instead maintained the title of moitahid only for the founders of the four main schools of Islamic law Hanafiya, Malikiya, Shafiya, Hanbaliya. Therefore, from the 12th century onwards jurists could occupy the position of a moitahid or access ijihad in only two cases, when distinguishing between the manifest and the obscure views of their particular schools or when they served as imitators of moitahids, expressing the views of the more qualified moitahids before them. Therefore, the practice of ijihad was restricted in favor of taqlid. These Sunni restrictions on the power of the Muaytahid and were due to historical developments and should not be accepted as terms of the original legal theory of ijihad. Topic: <inaudible> Shia. The Shia Muslims understand the process of ijihad as being the independent effort used to arrive at the rulings of Sharia. Following the death of the Prophet and once they had determined the Imam is absent, ijihad evolved into a practice of applying careful reason in order to uncover the knowledge of what Imams would have done in particular legal situations. The decisions the Imams would have made were explored through the application of the Quran, Sunnah, IJMA and AQL reason. It was not until the end of the 18th century that the title of Muaytahid became associated with the term faqih or one who is an expert in jurisprudence. From this point on religious courts began to increase in number and the ulama were transformed by Shi Islamic authorities into the new producer of ijihad. In order to produce perceptive moitahids that could fulfill this important role, principles of Shi jurisprudence were developed to provide a foundation for scholarly deduction of Islamic law. Sheikh Murtada Ansari and his successors developed the school of Shi'i law, dividing the legal decisions into four categories of certainty kot, valid conjecture zan, doubt shak, and erroneous conjecture wam. These rules allowed moitahids to issue adjudications on any subject, that could be derived through this process of ijihad, demonstrating their great responsibility to the Shi'i community furthermore, according to Shi'i Islamic jurisprudence a believer of Islam is either a moitahid one that expresses their own legal reasoning, or a mukhalid one performing taqlid of a moitahid and a matah one who acts with precaution. Most Shi'i Muslims qualify as mukhalid, and therefore are very dependent on the rulings of the moitahids. Therefore, the Muaytahids must be well prepared to perform ijihad, as the community of Mukhalid are dependent on their rulings. Not only did Shi'i Muslims require knowledge of the texts of the Quran and Sunnah, justice in matters of public and personal life, utmost piety, understanding of the cases where Shi'i Muaytahids reached consensus, 
ability to exercise competence and authority however, these scholars also depended on further training that could be received in religious centers called haza. At these centers they are taught the important subjects and technical knowledge a muaytahid need be proficient in such as Arabic grammar and literature Logic Extensive knowledge of the Quranic sciences and hadith Science of narrators Principle of jurisprudence Comparative jurisprudence Therefore, Shi'i Muaytahids remain revered throughout the Shi'i Islamic world. The relationship between the Muaytahids and Muqalids continues to address and solve the contemporary legal issues. Participating in ijihad, however, has been cautioned by scholars for those not properly educated in interpretation of the Quran. This is narrated by Ali ibn Husayn Zayn al Abidin, the great grandson of Muhammad, when he cautioned Aban ibn Abi Ayyish, a companion of the Imam, saying, O brother form, Abid Keys, if the issue becomes clear to you, then accept it. Otherwise remain silent and defer to Allah because your interpretation from the truth will be as far from the earth as the sky. <laughs> Female Moitahids A woman can be a Muaytahid and there are dozens who have attained the rank in the modern history of Iran for instance, Amina bint al-Majlisi in the Safavid era, Bibi Kanem in the Qajar era, Lady Amin in the Pahlavi era, and Zora Safati during the time of the Islamic Republic. There are diverging opinions as to whether a female Muaytahid can be a marja or not. Zora Safati and some male jurists believe a female Muaytahida can become a marja, in other words, they believe that believers perform taqlid emulation of a female Muaytahid but many male jurists believe a marja must be male. Topic see also Marja Grand Ayatollah's Islamic Golden Age Liberal Movements within Islam Istisan List of Islamic Terms in Arabic Biblical Hermeneutics Topic References Topic Notes Topic Citations Topic Books, Articles, etc. Weil Halleck, Was the Gate of Ijihad Closed? International Journal of Middle East Studies, 16, 1, 1984, 3-41. Glasse, Cyril, The Concise Encyclopedia of Islam, 2nd edition, Stacey International, London, 1991, ISBN 0-905743-65-2 Goldziher, Ignaz, Translated by A. and R. Hamori, Introduction to Islamic Theology and Law, Princeton University Press, Princeton, New Jersey, 1981, ISBN 0-691-10099-3 Kamali, Muhammad Hashim Principles of Islamic Jurisprudence, Islamic Text Society, Cambridge, 1991, ISBN 0-946621-2 4 1. Carlos Martinez, Limiting the Power of Religion from Within, Probabilism and Ishtihad, in Religion and Its Other, Secular and Sacral Concepts and Practices in Interaction. Edited by Heike Bach, Georg Feuchter, and Michi Necht Frankfurt, M., Campus Verlag, 2008. Topic external links Ijihad against the text Two theories of Ijihad and Introduction to Islamic Law by Joseph Schacht Was the Gate of Ijihad Closed? by Weil B. Halleck A detailed Q&A on Ijihad Opening the Doors of Ijihad, essay by Fred Dalmar on www.resetdoc.org.